Hi everybody, uh, I'm Jim Stottlemyre and tonight we're going to be doing a balance tray and uh, th this, this is what I'm, I'm calling balance tray. There might be another name for it but I, I don't know what that is. It's a marble game and uh, a lot of us had these when we were kids. You run your marbles around and uh, if we had more time for tonight's video, I'd show you how, how to do it completely, but you get those marbles in the, in the holes and, and that, that's, that's the game. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start with a, a piece of um, cherry. It's about eight inches in diameter and oh, maybe an inch and an eighth thick, something like that, a little over an inch. It, it, the size is not critical. Could be bigger, smaller, and, and you can use one inch, uh, one inch stock if you want. And tonight, I'm going to mount it on a uh, a screw chuck. This um, this screw chuck is is one that's made by uh, Glazier. Let me uh, pop that off so we can show it to you. And as far as I'm concerned, this is the uh, is the best screw chuck on the market. It's got a uh, collar on here that screws on and off, reverses. Um, there's other ways to mount this, of course. If you have a, a scroll chuck, your your scroll chuck probably came with a screw like this that'll that'll clamp in your your scroll chuck. It can also be mounted using um, a, a face plate. Or um, here's something that I've used several times. It's, it's got a little, when I parted it off last time, there's a little um, tip there that you can drill a hole in the back of your, your turning and just slide that in and glue it and go straight to the scroll chuck and you don't need one of these other methods of attachment. Now the screw on this, uh, on most screw, scroll chucks is, is much too long for the, the uh, part we're, we're doing. You just don't need that much engagement. So normally what people do when they have a, a screw that's too long is they'll take a piece of plywood and, and uh, they'll screw it on here and you end up with the, uh, with the less, less screw protrusion. One of the nice things about the glazier is that since this screws together, I can unscrew this to about, well, roughly the same, same thickness as that piece of plywood. And... I still have enough engagement between these two parts that I can attach my, my turning, my blank, and uh, I don't need to worry about the plywood and I have infinite uh, adjustment there. So I'm going to put this uh, blank on the screw chuck. You have to drill the hole is just so it's a little deeper than what you're going to go with your screw. And of course, you have to drill it size to your to your uh, to your screw. The glazier is a, a quarter inch drill, and we've got that on there. I'm going to use a face shield to get this to at least till we get it roughed into into uh, round. And the first thing I'm going to do is just true up the outside, and then I'll I'll true straighten up the face of it. So let's see what we've got here. Turn the speed down. Um, turn the lathe on. And I, I did, didn't mention earlier, but the you can see that this side's just just rough lumber. The back side I did run across the joiner to flatten it up a little bit. It's not completely trued up, but I like a nice flat surface against the um, against the screw chuck. So I'm going to use a bowl gouge for this operation. And uh, this is the, the, the grind I, I like most of the time, most of my bowl gouge. It's got a, just a slight convex on it. It's swept back. Um, it's called various names, Irish grind, Ellsworth grind, um, but it's a swept back grind. That's what, uh, what I'm going to use. And I'm going to keep the tool handle down and it's tilted this way also and then the the flute it's not 
not flat, it's tilted at about a 45 degree angle. Let's turn this on. Okay, it's fairly true. Um, it's not quite uh, quite uh, perpendicular. I'll, I'll make another cut there to, to fix that, and then we'll face this, the surface off. I'm uh, running that at about 1500 RPM. Could be a little faster. There, that's about 2000. Okay, that's nice and uh, nice and true now. I'm going to bring the tool rest around and we'll do the, the face. We want the tool to be cutting at about the center line and uh, just make a mark there where, the, where my tool is going to cut and flip that around. It's very, very close to, to center. So I'm going to let the tool rest right where it is and about the same speed and we're just going to, to draw the same tool from the inside to the out, straighten this up. Okay, that's fairly fairly true across there. You need a way to pick it up. So uh, I'm just going to cut a small cove there. Just going to turn the um, tool rest at about a 45. That ought to do it. I really like the way cherry turns. It's a real easy to turn wood. I brought two of these tool rests today with me and uh, one's too short on the stem and the other too long. So I, um, I wanted a longer one for the next project. I'm going to mount that with an expanding chuck and um, I've set my dividers here and you'll see a lot of people just touch the dividers and I do that sometimes too but you don't really have to if you're not comfortable putting your dividers into a spinning wood which there is a chance if you touch this point the one farthest away that it will catch and spin out of you. I've I did hear of one accident where somebody was blinded by by that, but uh, it's pretty rare. You can just guess where it is. Put a mark, and pretty good guess. So I've got the mark where I want to hollow it out, and we could use just about any tool for that. Um, one of our members is really fond of a scraper. 
So I'm going to, yeah, he's hiding back there, Rod. We'll just uh, take a scraper. You can, you can use just about any tool you want for this job. You want, you want to get about a, oh, I'd say an eighth of an inch deep. Should be plenty. I guess that's close to an eighth of an inch. And then you have to make the um, uh, undercut for your chuck. I don't think we need this anymore. It's roughed out. And uh, I use a skew chisel. And I'm going to feed that skew chisel in so that the bottom, so that this, this area here is flat against the bottom and, and work it underneath that lip. Okay, that looks pretty good. But before I take it off, then normally I would be sanding. I don't think we have to bore everybody with the sanding tonight. But um, before I take it off the screw chuck, I'm just going to take this. Okay, it fits easy. Um, and we'll remove it from the screw chuck. And remove the screw chuck. Oh. I'm, I size that recess for this size jaws. If you don't have the bigger jaws, you can use the standard jaws that come with your uh, your chuck. I just think it uh, it a little more attractive with the uh, larger base in, but it's, it doesn't make it any more functional. Okay. And we'll use our wrench to tighten that up, put a little pressure right, right in the middle, and open the jaws up. So like I said, we have about a, an eighth of an inch recess in there, plenty to hold a, a piece this size, and that should run pretty true. Yep. We're just going to face, face this off. And I've got, got that hole that I drilled in the middle. I'm just going to work this like a bowl. And take it down to where that hole either disappears or almost disappears. That center hole is going to be the center hole for our marbles, too. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of it showing.
And we can go back to the uh, same scraper. You can use just about any tools you want. This is, these projects are pretty nice because they uh, lend themselves to so many, many tools. Ideally, you want to make this bottom flat. Um, some people will, will hold a straight edge up while it's running and get a shiny spot on the bottom to show you where their high spot. I don't like doing that with my precision measuring tool, so I, I'm just going to look here. I've got it high in the middle, so I'm going to take that middle down a little bit more. Um, you, you don't get too hung up on whether it's flat or not, because if it's not flat, you just made it more difficult to play. <laughs> so, uh, so I could take a little bit more out of the middle here. Okay. Looks like just a little bit more. Okay, and then we can just Blend this radius in. Now I'm just going to take a, a, a uh, rounded scraper that uh, get that that corner and, and blend it into the bottom. bit of torn out green I'm going to try to get out of the bottom and uh, looks like my the rim here is not quite trued up When you prepare for these demos, you always sharpen all your tools and then you figure that they're going to get dull anyhow. So I got another scraper. This one's a negative, negative ground scraper. Um, yeah, there we go. Noisy, isn't it? Yeah, I was gonna say, what is that noise? The, is, the, is the belt, the, the pulley coming loose, man?
Don't know. But what we've got now is uh, it's, it's it's fairly good. There might be a little bit of torn out green in that in that. But, um, I think the idea is is to show how to make these these toys tonight. Um, this one you still have to lay out and uh, and drill the holes. And the way I've been doing it is I'll just make. Uh, two marks that is a oh probably the fan I'm just one up the I think it's the fan came loose no nope. I'm gonna see if I can hear this Watch your fingers. Sounds like it's up by the chuck. Yeah, yeah it does. It does yeah. All right. Um, to do to do the drilling, it's pretty simple. You just take this off of the off the chuck, and um, and mark out your holes. The ones that the one that I have here that I'll pass around, I I marked four spots just use a small square to get um, four at 90 degrees and then four on the inside at 40 45 degrees degrees off you can also if you want more holes take take the radius and put it in your compass and just step off you end up with six equally spaced holes instead of four it's it's a pretty simple project um, I would if I was making this at home I would take this to the drill press um, I use a half inch drill and about a quarter inch deep makes a nice size for the marbles uh, and I just used a Forstner bit it leaves a little little dimple in the bottom but um, that's just decoration it doesn't hurt the toy we're, we're trying to give these these kids something to to play with something for Christmas I'm sure they're not going to be worried if there's a little dimple in the bottom of the hole. So, so you use a portion of it? So yes, I do. If you wanted to play with that on the way around okay. there. Um, you mean the easy one? Yeah, you've got the easy one. But these are laid out a little differently. Um, well, that's two circles just like the other one. What was the uh, thickness of your blank to start with? Uh, that was about an inch, inch thick. Rod, where are those those blanks? There's some. Oh, is that yours? Box here. They're they're an inch thick. Yeah. And they're flat on one side. Okay, you can help yourself to those. Uh, mine was just a little thicker than those, but not not much. And the sassafras they turn it smell really good when you turn them. Your shop smells great for about two days. Hey, Bert Gordon. All right. <laughs> uh, we're going to make an another toy now that one was pretty easy would it take 15 minutes you got a toy they're in they're in that Mentos box Joe I didn't want to make it too difficult for you you want any more Okay, I, I don't know how many of you have uh, kids or grandkids that are are really into the Harry Potter and um, those wizards type stuff. They had a uh, uh, event in Greencastle just what two weeks ago where they uh, I saw some of the pictures from it and they had a guy in there selling magic wands. Well, a magic wand is just about one of the easiest projects you can make, especially since nobody knows exactly what a magic wand looks like. You can make it look like anything you want. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> what I'm using here is cherry. What size? What size you got there, Jim? That's probably an inch and an eighth. I, I would think, Joe. I. It doesn't matter. No. No, it, it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, as far as length, the inch and a quarter. As far as length, the finished length should be somewhere between 12 and 15 inches. You get them much longer than that, and they are no longer a magic wand or they're a sword. Yes. And the same way with the diameter, it's probably best to keep, uh, not make them real, real pointy. I can see why Joe didn't like that, uh, that uh, there. Can't get the tool rest in. So, what... Well, one thing that um, is interesting about this project is you can do it with just about any, any tool in your arsenal. Um, if you are, you can do the entire thing with a bowl gouge, you can do the entire thing with a spindle gouge, you can do the entire thing with a skew chisel. The, the whole works, start to finish. And it's, it's a good exercise for, if, if one of those tools, um, Where'd Rod get to? If one of those tools like a bowl gouge intimidates you, not you, I must be getting you mixed up with somebody. You, you can do this entire thing with a bowl gouge. If the uh, skew chisel is one that bothers you, just get your skew chisel and you can rough with the skew chisel. Start, start with the handle down. The trick to a skew chisel is well, that was a peeling cut. There's not much of a trick there. Um, but when you start cutting this way, only use the bottom, bottom half of the chisel. You will not get a catch if you only use the bottom half of the chisel. You just put it up there. And I know some of our guys like, really like the skew chisel. Um, it does give you a smoother finish. I'm going to, um, since I got the bowl gouge out, I'll just finish rounding this up with a bowl gouge. You can, you can use a, um, like I said, just about any tool you want. Uh, I did have a spindle roughing gouge. Which, um, Our object here is, is just making this round. And you can hear that it's not, not round yet. Okay, so we've got the, we're going to say that the handle's in this way. Uh, it gives you less vibration if you keep your thin, thinner part of the turning away from the uh, headstock. So we'll just... Uh, Turn this down a little bit for the uh, end of the wand. I 
And with something this long and this thin, you're going to get some, as we get thinner, there will be some vibration. Now with the roughing gouge, I'm holding it down a little little bit back this way down and turn just a slight slight amount into the cut. Nobody asked me how fast we're going. About 2,000 RPM right now. That's the same speed we were going with the uh, balance tray. These handles can you can make anything you you want to. It's a good uh, opportunity to try your your burning. Uh, I was going to bring a, something to burn some grooves tonight. Um, here of late, I've been using um, a uh, card scraper. Everybody knows what a card scraper is. If you have an old saw, if you've read the newsletter, and John's going to teach us how to how to. If we, if we have a saw that fails, saws can be cut up and made into card scrapers. Um, and they make, they actually make pretty good card scrapers. And we're just going to roll a, an end on here. Put a little bit of a bead. Hmm. And then you like I said earlier, you can just use your imagination, make these look like anything you want. Um, I'm just going to put some, some grooves in here. So we have probably five eighths of an inch. That's that's a good size. Um, here's a cutting tool that most people have in their shop. I'm not going to do a lot of sanding tonight, but that is the uh, cheater's way to get a nice straight um, end on the wand. And I would, uh, here's a tool that, that uh, I picked up a couple of years ago and I really like it. It uh, uses a hook and loop sandpaper. You can just go from grit to grit to grit. Usually I take a little more time than that to sand it, but that's, uh, that's the idea. And we'll um, put an end on this thing. And I think we're going to have a magic wand. Let's see.
when it comes to part this off, you've got a couple options. You can you can part it off till it uh, come completely off. You can get it in there to where it's almost off. And saw it. You, you can get pretty pretty small on a spindle before you have to worry about it breaking. sanding which I did not do you have a, a nice toy that uh, the kids can play with yeah, be careful with that Bart going to you still got the plug in it Jim it's a... okay it's plugged <laughs> you said these are colored usually or are they... you you can you can I just took that out and I didn't want to how are we on time, Joe? Oh, it's uh, 25 after 8. Okay, we're going to do one, one more. And this, Rod brought some, um, some two inch stock. This, this is a quick project that um, can be used for a number of, number of uh, things, toy being one of them. Oh, I better keep that. You want to time this, Joe? Is there a uh, certain size? You have to uh, what I've got is is two by two by. It's a little less than four. It's about three and a half. And we're just going to round it first. And for this size, just just make it so it's round. You don't want to go any any farther farther down than that. So I have got it round. I'm going to take the um, skew chisel and put a tenon on the end. Like that. You just use the tip of the chisel on that? Yeah. Uh, my, my skew chisel, I have it ground about the same angle as my, my uh, dovetail jaws. So I, I just did that peeling cut. It wasn't just plunging in, it was more of a start low and come up a little bit, cut on it. The other way would have been a, been a scrape which would have worked for, for this project. Now, we're going to pop this out. Put that on. And I'm 
Whoops. And we got that in there. That's good. There's a bit of a flat spot on it. I'm going to take that out right now. And I'm going to drill a hole in the end of it. You can turn the outside or the inside of this project. Doesn't matter which one you do first. There is, the advantage of doing the inside first is that... Uh, gives you a little less vibration we're, we're gonna drill with the um, spindle gouge could have taken a drill but I'm, I'm gonna hollow this out so, so get get it the right position and just use it as a drill Okay, that should be deep enough. And now we can use the same tool to hollow this. Cutting from the in inside out. gonna be a surprise I don't even know what it is yet but, uh, hey there's a good idea Okay, we'll just smooth this up a little bit. put a little bead on the end of it I hope we'll see and soften the edge on the inside Not quite, still a little bit of a flat spot on the outside. Hoping that doesn't cause us a problem.
another time where we could be using our um, sandpaper to finish this off nice. We're not going to. Just parting it off with a quarter inch parting tool and um, starting with the tool handle down and it's it's another peeling cut just like we've been talking. You you uh, you're you're cutting not scraping. You start it into the wood and just lift the handle and push push down. Take this out and put this in. I could have taken a little bit more off. It, it go right in that that little recess we made. A little bit of run out. I'm using the bowl gouge again. I'm going to turn it over and just use it as a scraper to touch that corner or that flat spot. Making a, a slight concave in the middle. That'll just let it sit, on, sit a little better. And now we have a marble container, is that what we said it was, a marble container? Or an egg cup for breakfast, put your egg in there after it's hard boiled, soft boiled. Or if you really want to get good, Joe, you could have one, I could have one, we could toss a golf ball back and forth. Oh, yeah. That could happen. Yeah. Na Nancy said it would make a nice, uh, put, uh, I don't know, something in there to stick pins for pin cushion. I don't know, there's a lot of things. Yeah, it would, would. So there's three, three for one tonight. Um, any questions on any of the three? No, but you did a good job, Jim. Good job.